Matt, yeah, are you um, releasing this, like our long form podcast? I know we, we call it a podcast, but it's on YouTube. Are you also releasing it as an actual cast, an audio only format? Yeah, I call this a YouTube podcast now. Yeah, I mean, that's where podcasting is pretty much heading towards. Isn't it strange that we talk all about AI algorithm for all these channels, but we never talk about it for podcasting itself on podcasting, you know, like it's so limited what we can control in order to get more downloads on that particular audio. That's the thing with a podcast. I'm uploading the podcast we get between zero to ten downloads per episode but sometimes when we talk about certain topics i guess people are searching for that we have some of the podcasts that have a few hundred or a few thousand downloads but you know i think in order to kind of promote a a, a podcast you have to promote it on another podcast that's my my thinking i haven't really well yeah on and, it. and there's no there's no search engine for for podcasts which is kind of crazy you know you should be able to search for a term and see like episodes on that topic or something like that but i don't i don't believe there's an effective search engine for it. youtube Scott right. for the USA now has their own podcasting section. Clearly they're going into it. But even then, I don't think most people are going to see a YouTube episode podcast as an actual podcast. They're still going to see it as a YouTube video that's just long form. Like to me, a podcast is you have it on your phone and you're listening to it as you walk or exercise or drive or something. And that's a different experience. It is crazy that there hasn't been a search, like some kind of platform or just make iTunes better. Yeah iTunes or you think even YouTube, even Google would be able to pounce on this being like having the two major search engines. Yeah, or Spotify, you know, they're the ones who went yep. in podcasting first. But I remember I was looking for something. I was just trying to find some new episodes of podcasts, you know, yes, basic discovery of new podcasts using my phone. And I think I had the Google player. I used the search and it's just coming up with exactly the main two or three shows on something and then a whole bunch of random shows that look like they had nothing to do with the topic. So definitely like it's underdeveloped that part of podcast. I talked to you about this before, Yaro. I was looking into dynamic ad insertion. You remember I told you about this, where there was only certain podcast players that actually had that feature, which is where you can insert ads into your podcast after it's already been released. So if you're selling advertising at a, you know, a CPM, let's say you're charging $100 per thousand downloads or something like that. But if you're getting on average, let's just say a thousand downloads per episode, but all your backlog catalog gets an average of 3,000 downloads per month or something. So you could insert your ads in all your past catalog. Therefore, you could charge for 4,000 impressions versus only 1,000 or something, you know? Uh, but now it's actually getting introduced into a lot more podcast hosts. But I actually had this idea like a few years ago to create a platform w which could work for any podcast host to be able to manage your dynamic ad insertion. And But now it's just becoming more popular. We use Buzzsprout for our podcast host. We could do dynamic ad insertion. Unfortunately, we have absolutely no advertisers and no ads on our podcast. So it's not, not too much. You just got to get us. in touch with Manscape. They'll, uh, they'll sponsor anything. <laughs> I'd be a great Manscape. Give me your I'm best, best Manscape pitch, Matt. <laughs> Wait, no, no. Save that till we're sponsored. Yeah, I don't know if I want to hear it. <laughs> I'm uh, one of the hairiest guys you've ever met. Um, I, I got lasered. Before and after. And I, I, got, well, I got lasered, right? And then I told the lady before I went there, I said, I'm probably going to be the hairiest guy you ever dealt with. She's like, no, we've had lots of hairy guys. Then after I went my first session, I'm like, was I the hairiest guy you ever had? She's like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not not anymore. Not, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. So if you use anchor to host your podcast, you can now upload video as part of your podcast on Spotify. So they've, they first just limited it now to only people using Anchor. So because we're on Buzzsprout, we can't put these videos on Spotify. But if you want to have a video podcast on Spotify, you can. I've been mostly promoting our podcast on Spotify. I previously used to use Apple as my podcast player. I find there's not one really good podcast player. We mentioned this on the show before that I think if any podcast player came out that allowed kind of like a social network within it, like commenting, and and so on you know would be way better especially commenting at certain points in the interview that's part of the problem or the pain with them as well like there's no interaction with people. oh yeah yeah I remember soundcloud tried to do it i think the problem is it's fragmented there's no super dominant i mean itunes is the, is the most dominant but that's because most people have iphones so it's weird like even then do you know when you use apple I think Spotify too, because it's downloading the files on your device. So then if you are interested in this, it starts downloading all these different podcasts, right? I noticed before I would have like 50 gigs of audio files. Then And so when my phone starts filling up and I go look at how do I use my files, I'm like, holy shit, there's so much audio being like 50 gigs of audio is like a lot to have, right? But if I don't hit that 
automatically download these these episodes. Then if I'm out and about, I gotta wait. I have to hit download, wait for it to download in order to play. Like the whole experience is just not that great. I see a merger happening too, right? Because even just what you've mentioned, Spotify doing video, YouTube going podcast. And Yaro, you mentioned like the podcast being like a unique experience, which I think it is, but I think it's going to be meshed here in the in a few years. Like I think that's the trend. Because I have, for instance, and I'm just one person, but I that's why I pay for YouTube, uh, 10 bucks a month or something. YouTube premium, I got that. Yeah, so I can play it and then turn it off, turn my phone off and just listen. Most of the stuff I listen to is YouTube videos with no video. And I don't know that I'm a unique case in that. I don't know, maybe I am. But I do feel like there's definitely a merger happening where people just want to be able to access the inf- information. And I think the ideal scenario is I can turn it on to video if I want. I can just listen it to audio if I want. That's what I heard as a possible free option if the podcast area of YouTube becomes like the dominant podcasting space. Yeah. They will allow the YouTube app to stream without you having to pay for the, the premium service. So you can basically have it in your pocket without putting it on closed mode and it'll keep playing. It's interesting. This is triggering a conversation I heard between Lex Friedman you know, super famous podcaster interviewing the Botas sisters. They're like professional chess players, a couple of young Romanian ladies and they're streamers and YouTubers. They were talking about, it's almost like everything you're saying, Matt, about optimizing for an algorithm for engagement. And they were saying like, yeah, for YouTube, you got to make sure that first one second of the video grabs attention, open loops, hooks, constant screen changes. You got to cut things down to the bare minimum best parts. And then Lex is like, yeah, on my podcast, I can just ramble on say nothing forever and I don't have to worry about optimizing at all for any of that um, as we are. That's, that's true. That's a significant part of the translation too, to combining the two because the algorithms work differently, I'm guessing too. And that would impact you on YouTube if you normally ramble, but it's not optimized for YouTube then in that case. But there's clearly a lot of long form content that people do consume on YouTube that's not like that as well. Yeah, well, you're right. It's the consumption method. Like if you press play, expecting to listen to a long conversation in your pocket without looking at the visuals, you don't care about the changing camera angles. You don't care about it being, you know, 10 minutes get to the point. And that's the same thing too with using YouTube as a search engine to solve a problem like you're saying Matt you just had to teach people how to do something with uh, posting Instagram scheduling right you had to make sure the video like I said we all know you're going to create a little short from that section so if people search for how to schedule a post on Instagram hopefully your short or your video will show up and it'll give an answer to the question so it's very Google orientated versus a podcast which is kind of long form entertainment and then you've got in between like a 15 minute YouTube video which probably is not instructional but still needs to be edited down without the rambling like a podcast has so it is really all about the intent behind the consumption of the format. And what's interesting about YouTube, they're kind of slotting into all formats. They're getting solutions to a problem in super short form. They're getting entertainment 10 minute long, now doing podcasting, which could be an hour. Or, you know, Lex Friedman, he's had five hour long episodes, which is insane. Like I can't imagine watch time numbers that guy must have in his YouTube studio with five hour episodes. So it's hard to juggle. I think that's why YouTube is probably dipping their toes in slowly. With- Do you get rewarded for watch time on YouTube? Like ad revenue does that increase if you have more if people watch longer watch more of longer videos yeah you got more time to insert ads right okay interesting yeah it's based on watch time yeah but what i think it is is like with podcasts the way people consume it they're maybe at the gym going out for a walk a bike ride, you know, run, they're driving. Whereas on YouTube, you're like holding your phone, maybe. I think 70 or 80% of the YouTube is watching the phone. So there's a lot of this sort of looking for the next thing. You're tapping a lot on your phone, right? You're not just kind of like doing something else, kind of background, you're listening. But also when you have somebody in your ears and talking to you, I feel like you really build a relationship. Like the people who I listen to on podcasts, like I feel like I know them. I feel like I have a stronger affinity towards them versus the YouTubers. Like I mentioned earlier about this Robert Benjamin guy. I don't feel like I know that guy. I watch his content i know nothing about him i don't know where he lives i don't know nothing all i know is he's giving me some information about the, the algorithm i listened to a marketing school with neil patel eric sue i like that show way too many ads on their podcast if they're listening to this it's like getting annoying but it's like every episode is like the first 60 seconds is the same freaking ad but i listen to them through there and like there's always little things where like i start to feel like i know them i know what they're up to i know where they went where they travel all these sort of things right so i feel like if i were to bump into them i would feel like i kind of know them whereas on youtube sometimes you you have that same sort of you know certain people you you could build that on youtube that's one thing with podcasting why it could be long form because it's kind of going for an hour long drive you don't want to touch your phone i like to just find something to listen to hit play I find it difficult now to listen to Marketing School because their episodes are very short 
and there keeps on being this like one minute ad I have to skip every time and I'm driving so I can't keep touching my phone. So I actually start stop listening to it while I'm driving because it's annoying. I hope they listen to this because seriously, it's very annoying. Your odds are not good at that. <laughs> you did manage to get the attention of- Megan, yeah. Ma we, we actually had the attention of a lot of people. We also, we talked about Dropbox, we talked to Dropbox. I just talked to the founders of Q and Q Promote. They actually said they want to sponsor our show. So we're going to be doing something with them. So it does work sometimes. I want you to produce a skit for their sponsorship, Matt. What, what kind of skit for a coupon? I don't know. You just got to make it happen. Well, let's, let's, we'll do something fun.